again today our second demo of the day my name is Pepsi Garcia and we have special guest Joyce Hello. from Toxic Sweet Shops okay. and also the Cake Bar Show yes you guys okay so like she said I am Joyce Marcellus I'm owner of Toxic Sweet Shop and if you didn't know or you should know we're putting on a cake show in Long Beach California July 7th and 8th we do have classes Six, seven, eight that are still open. Like, let's see, bring that hell Latina class from Laura. I'm gonna show you guys really quick because I think this is so amazing. I've been wanting to tap into this, but where? Oh, my bad, right here. Well, we'll do this one Okay, so my bad. I didn't know you guys. This is high tech up in here. Okay, <laughs> so this is a class that is still available. Oh, we got assistance right here. Um, this class is still available. It's on a Friday. And you guys get to learn how to make this exact cake, right? Uh, yeah, she's, she's going to make the Laura, jello. But yes, the jello, you get all supplies included. But I just want to show you guys because this is so cool. Right here. I'm going to show you guys up here because you guys are right there. So if you guys haven't yet signed up, go there, okay? So we still have tickets available to the show we just sold out of the prom so our we're basically doing an event within an event which is our 80s prom and it's completely sold out but the event is completely open which will have raffles we're gonna have demos there's gonna be swag bags if you're competing we still have uh, spots available to compete and that will be closing out next week we still have rooms available to at the actual venue to book with the uh, venue pr uh, the hotel price that are actually show price you're gonna want to book now before it's gone so that was pretty much it right you guys so i'm super super excited i'm gonna be doing a filet mignon with some mashed potatoes and some au jus and basically i'm gonna do it at a rice crispy treat i would do it out of cake but we don't have enough time i actually like to um basically bake a cake on wednesday i like to carve it on thursday and ice it put it in the fridge overnight so it's nice and hard and then i work with it let's say friday if i was doing this order for saturday but we don't have that kind of time here we got about an hour so i'm going to be making it out of rice krispie treat and personally i like to use things that are similar to the size of the actual cake so realistically you're not going to carve a filet me on this small of a cake unless it's a personal size cake you're going to want to do a bigger size of cake so you, basically with this today's lessons you're going to want to take what how i color the color application how i layer colors how i texture and you can apply it to any kind of steak really realistically so that's what we're going to hear do today and i just want to do a quick look because we got people over here as well so we're going to bring you guys down do i just stay here yeah okay all right you guys so i brought okay wait this is Manny's um, goddaughter. Um, goddaughter. Yes. So say hi here in the camera. Say hi. Okay. And She's, what's your name? Sophia. You're gonna Sophia. you're gonna taste the steak after we're done, right? And the mashed potatoes. Okay. 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 We got Let's it. We got go the ahead. we got we got our taster here. Okay. And so. <laughs> So personally, I personally, I'm not a plate artist, so I don't make realistic plates. I prefer to use glass plates. You can get plates at the dollar store, the 99 cent store. I'm not a, I'm not a plate maker, so I will never, if you ever see on my cakes, I'm always gonna be using real plates. So people always say, well, you're a food artist. Shouldn't you be making your plates? I'm like, hello, I make food. I don't make plates. So that is the thing, okay, you guys? So I did bring my, my, one of my favorite plates that I prefer to use. So I'm gonna start with the Rice Krispie Treats. Okay, you're distracting me, ma'am. <laughs> well, you're in my bubble. <laughs> okay, so I just bought these little pre, I like the pre-packaged Rice Krispie Treats. I feel like um, they already have the right consistency for carving, for for um, shaping. Yes, you can make your own. And if I were, if you wanted to make your own, one tip I would say is when you're melting the uh, marshmallows, you're not going to want to overheat them. You want them where they just basically expand and then add your cereal. Because what happens is if you over melt them, it's going to take a longer time for it to set. And if you ever notice when you're working with pre-made and it starts to get really sloppy, it's because you overheated the marshmallows. You don't want you want to minimize how much you heat the marshmallows, basically. So but for me. I don't have the time to make it and I find these are just more easier for me to work with. They're already ready to go. So usually I like the smaller bites, but I stopped at the uh, gas station and they just had these big giant ones. I'm like, man, which are kind of cool. I didn't even know they made them this size. So whenever I work with anything as far as Rice Krispie Treat, I kind of imagine like I usually work with the little square. So I will imagine I will build kind of like where I want to go. OK, so I'm thinking, is this the size I want to be? I know it's too wide, but I feel like this is pretty much the height and the thickness that I kind of want to go with. So then I will start shaping from there. So we're going to start shaping. 
and this might be too thick, but we're gonna make it work. I'll do a bigger steak for you guys. A pricier steak for sure, affiliate me on. I do like to eat it though. Yeah, I was gonna say, who doesn't like the big steak? Yes, <laughs> but you know you don't get this at the restaurant. It's like half the size and stuff, right? I'm too like poor when I go to the restaurants. I'm like, mm, just give me the New York. Even though that's still expensive, right? My husband is like, uh-uh. He, he eats meat. He's a meat lover. Not me. I am, I am, but I'm not, I guess. Depends what it is. So I'm just going to press it. I am going to kind of pinch a little bit of the edges. And a lot of it we're going to do, you got to think when you work with any kind of rice crispy treat that it's basically your, I'm going to cut a little bit. It's too long. It's um, basically your skeleton of whatever you're making. So this can be a typical if you're making like a figure or stuff like that. You want to think of it like your your actual skeleton. So when you layer it with fondant, it's going to get thicker. So if it's way too thick, you're going to lose the realistic look that you're kind of going for. How many ounces is your steak? This, <laughs> I'm going to say it is... Uh, yeah, maybe like 12. <laughs> so I'm just going to shape it. And then I usually like I'll slam it on here like this just to get like a nice more smoother. It's really hard to uh, remove a lot of these particularly. Can you see? Okay, yes, I see. Um, a lot of these like ridges and stuff like this. So if you are making like a figure, something I can recommend for you guys is like, I do a double layering of fondant. So basically, if you ever notice you color a lot of fondant and then you kind of put it away and you have a small piles, I'll mix that up. I always save every color of fondant. I, I'll put it in a pile. It's good to turn into black when you have tons of different colors. And also I like it for when I use a lot of Rice Krispie treats. So I'll layer one mix of whatever color it is. And then I layer with the white, the final product. The one thing I like about it better, it's not messy when you're using like, let's say buttercream or something like that. Then it becomes extremely messy and a lot harder to work with. And I'm just, you know, I'm about the easy stuff. You know what I'm saying? And it seems a lot more work to make buttercream than it is to just use like leftover fondant that's probably going to go to waste and dry up anyways. You know what I'm saying? And it makes good black. It's like it saves time on black making. Okay, so it doesn't have to be perfect because no meat's exactly perfect, but I feel like this is a good shape for me. Okay, so then we're going to eat this after I'm sure. <laughs> and then have a little bit of Everclear. Or would it know the grain alcohol? I always call this vodka, but it ain't vodka, you guys. It's grain alcohol. Okay. So I always like to start with white. I feel like I am a food artist, so I don't like starting with a slate color. I feel like everything has a lot of colors. Like if you look at your skin, it's not one particular color. You can't say, oh, you're you know, you're just brown, you know, obviously I have like a few colors here, <laughs> but that's kind of what I like to do. I always do with white. I never, never, ever use colored fondant for anything I do. Okay. So we're going to just roll it out and I am using, this is satin ice. I do like to use their fondant. I'm going to say because it's good for food. It tends to dry and you can um, even create more texture once it starts to dry. And since we're doing a steak, we don't have to worry about like going super thick or doing the double layering. So are you guys coming As to the show? As a food artist, do you specialize in cakes or do you? Um, well, I've been in the industry about 10 years, so I've had a lot of clients. I mean, I would do like 20 orders a weekend and then I got really burned out. And uh, I mean, I'm a home baker. I have a basic oven, old school oven. I was, you know, one rack at a time kind of day. I was, I would pretty much dedicate one full day to just basically um, baking. So it was a lot of work and I had like a nervous breakdown one day. Every though, even though everything went right and all the orders were delivered perfect, I just realized like it was way too much stress than it was worth financially in a sense. And I just um, decided not to do really a lot of orders. So uh, I pretty much, um, I teach, 
I travel, I teach, I have a mini restaurant online that has like different tutorials like how to make fish, how to make mushrooms, how to make green beans. Um, I also put on, uh, we also, Cass and I run Sweets University, which is like a virtual campus. We're also putting on a cake show. I also run social media for different companies and as well as mine. So that's pretty much kind of, and I like to, uh, I have a clothing line, well, a t-shirt line that I haven't really put a lot of attention to, and I power lift. So I'm extremely busy right now. <laughs> I don't have time for orders, but I still do some for people, but I don't do them, like people don't really request food. Does that make sense? Um, very rare do I get a food cake and then it gets really exciting, but mostly I do a lot of birthdays, first birthdays and stuff like that. So, all right, so if you saw, I just kind of pushed it down and I'm not too worried about this because this is gonna sit into the buttercream <coughs> mashed potatoes. Okay, and then we're gonna start texturing. So one of my favorite tools is this little one here and I will go and I'm just going to do these <coughs> little lines. So you're just gonna do a lot of texturing before and then we'll do some more texturing. And it doesn't have to be perfect. You're just going to, you want to do texture before you paint because what happens is that some of the color is going to get trapped inside the actual um, creases or any indentations that you make. So we're just doing like little lines here and there. They don't have to be perfect. You can kind of crisscross them. You're going to lose some of them when we start kind of pushing. And actually, this is not sad and nice now that I'm thinking about it. This is actually Wilton. I was like trying to think because I pulled it out of my Santa nice box, but this feels a lot softer. So this is Wilton. I still, I mean, I like doing, I do a lot of smash cakes too. I'm not, I'm not too much of an order anymore kind of girl. I think I've went through it and I've achieved good success with my business that I'm very um, motivated by new things. So now we're gonna do um, foil. Foil is another great little tool for texturing. And we're just gonna kind of crumble it and we're just gonna, tw whenever you do your texturing, you're gonna kind of twist and push. When you twist and push, some of the foil creases kind of lift. So it creates an, a different kind of texture versus just if you were like doing this. So if I'm just doing this, you're getting that texture up here. But when you're kind of pushing and twisting, you're almost lifting and texturizing. And you could do the same exact thing. Now, if you were doing it as in cake, um, you would probably wanna do a cake that's kind of cold. And obviously it wouldn't move, you know, you could, would just stick there and you would press on it and it'll be fine. As long as don't go too hard, obviously, because if you go really thin when you roll out your fondant, then it might, you know, poke through. And then I'm kind of creasing the top because they tend to have like this, when they're seared onto the pan, they get like a nice kind of flat top. And this is the best part about being a food artist, you guys. I get to try food and feel it and texture it and love on it. Mm -hmm. So I love being a food artist, man. I do tutorials for Sugar Geek Show. I've done tutorials for Avalon's Cakes. Um, I've done tutorials for American Cake Decorating Magazine, all food tutorials. So even though it seems like, what would you do with a whole bunch of food tutorials? It makes a, it makes a difference. This, the thing is I want you guys to learn is that you're just learning basically how I apply color. That's like the biggest thing. And then texture. You can apply this to different techniques. You can do a wedding cake with a new texture that most people wouldn't even think. You know what I'm saying? So you can't limit yourself to thinking, oh, well, I'm just making a steak. Like, no, like you're learning how to do texture. You're learning how to color. You're learning how, yeah, because I'm a colorist. I can match any color. I can match any color. I'm very, very like, because I study food so much, it's like well, for this particular steak, I mean, I brought all these colors just for the steak, so it makes a huge difference, like, and I'm like, is that enough color? Like, I'm not sure, you know, it's like, I haven't made the steak for a minute, so. But I love making food. It's weird. So I'm just kind of giving different textures. Then I'll go back. And then I'll kind of like pull it up a little. The more the textures, the better. It's gonna be dark meat, so you're not gonna see like, you're not gonna be like, oh, well, I see all these lines. No, you're not gonna see them. They're gonna turn into like meats and stuff like that. And 
I'm just going to pinch the edges just to make sure again I didn't smash them too much. Okay, <clears throat> now we're going to color it. Actually, before we color it, I'm going to let it sit for a minute. And we're going to make our mashed potatoes. So for mashed potatoes, I love using buttercream. This buttercream is like an American buttercream that you use like the Crisco, the powdered sugar, the water kind of situation. It is, it's just the most realistic. It's great for like making avocados, like buttercream. You can make buttercream avocados. You just freeze it. You know what I'm saying? So this is basically my mashed potato. So for the mashed potato color, you're going to want to go with yellow and ivory. Let me get this one. This one feels a little bit. The, you, I know, like, I was like, why do I use so much ivory? I was like, I barely have colors, and I've just got this box of colors. Okay, so we're going to do yellow and ivory. Reason why is because, so ivory is a yellow and brown base. This is obviously yellow. We want to bring out more of the yellow than the brown. This is going to give you a nice kind of, like, creamy butter mashed potatoes. So we're going to do that. And I always kind of start at the sides i never go directly into a buttercream because once you put in the color it's hard to take out out of a buttercream unless i'm going to keep adding more buttercream but since this is the only buttercream i got we got to make it we got to be careful we don't over color okay so then i'll just grab from here and a little bit from here and then i'll start mixing it in oh i need to be over here my bad there's like too many cameras. <laughs> I'm used to the one. And even then, when I film, I'm like, oh. every time I film, for some reason, I'm always out of frame. And I'm like, why? <sighs> yes. I need like my own camera crew over here. Okay, so then I just keep adding until I get, don't be careful. Like I said, once you add too much, then you are, that's it. We're done. I kind of start liking this color. I may add a little bit of ivory. So do you see how it's starting to kind of change the colors? And you can easily do this for a cake. You just want to go very little. We're just basically tinting the buttercream. We just don't want to add too much. Do we have a microwave in here or no? Yeah. Oh, we do? Oh, perfect. You know what I did forget? No, 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 no. Yes. Whatever you need. Mariglaze. Yeah, Mariglaze. I'll buy it. Yeah. How did I forget? Mariglaze. So what do you guys think? Looks like a nice little, yeah, like a smashed potato. Okay. So I forgot. We got to make the jus. Do you have Mariglaze? Yes. It's right there. No, it's not yet. I don't know. It's not my stuff, huh? Well, that, what is that, piping gel? Oh, um, no, corn syrup. Let me get it. Well, we can use corn syrup. You sure? Yeah, so I wouldn't use corn syrup for a client's cake. I would go with like a piping gel or a mirror glaze, which is piping gel. It's just a thinner consistency. And then you're going to, like if you use the Cal Java one, you're going to want, or the fondant, you're gonna to wanna to melt it in the microwave and then you're gonna pour it onto your, let's say your cake board or your plate or whatever you're gonna use because it does work just like glazing a cake. But since I totally forgot that, uh, no, I got brushes. Um, I totally forgot we're gonna use corn syrup. Well, like, we can melt this one, huh? A little bit? We'll melt it after, okay. How did I forget? Mary glaze is life. Okay, so then, can I use all of it, or should I just, oh my god, it's hard. Let me get you the other one. Yeah. That one needs a little, uh, yeah, that one. <laughs> this ain't no, this ain't no corn syrup, y'all guys. What is this? It's like isomalt. <laughs> I forgot my Mariglaze, man. Okay, let her, while she gets that, okay. While she gets that, we would put it here. So we're going to color that. We're going to go with a little bit of chocolate brown and a little bit of white. So you always want to add a little bit of white when you're going with um, like the glaze or like anything that's clear because it's going to help solidify the color. How did I forget stuff? 
I was like, I'm so gangster, I'm prepared. Oh, is these like extra cups right here? Whatever you need, let me know. Yes. But can. they're not open. Tienes otros? Mm. Oh, okay, I got it. Okay. I'm gonna just drop some in here. I don't wanna waste, I don't wanna ruin Mariglaze. Mariglaze is life, I love Mariglaze. But you could do the same concept, like have you seen those glazed cakes? So if you want to do like a slimer on a cake, then you're going to want to use phonics. And the great thing is that Baker's Bodega Express is going to be at the Cake Bar Cake Show, and, I, and I'm sure that will be there, because those are always good at, to get at the cake shows. <laughs> That's where I stock of, is at the cake shows. Okay, so let me add a little bit of chocolate brown. And I'm gonna again, like I always start on the on the sides of things, because once you go, you put it in, you're done. This I don't mind. I'm gonna put a little bit of white in here, and then we're going to mix it up. So I'll just grab a little bit on my brush, and then kind of mix it in. And then I'm probably gonna need a little bit more. forget you guys I'm sorry you have to just kind of give me like hey hey, hey. no I'm bad about it I'm always bad <laughs> yeah we're definitely any more I'm just gonna put a drop in here it seems like it's the color is a lot lighter Okay, and then I'm going to, which can be like a gravy too. If you wanted to make a gravy, I would not add as much chocolate. I would maybe add a little bit of an orange and ivory to get it more of like a gravy color. So I'm gonna put this in the microwave. And you don't want to do it for too long because it is, it gets hot quick <laughs> for sure. I mean like 10, 50 seconds the most. You just want it to be more fluid. Okay. We're going to take our plate. We're going to pour. You see how it becomes more fluid? And then I'm just going to kind of move it around so we have. And it'll set just exactly the same. It's priority setting. Okay. Okay. And then we'll scoop our mashed potatoes on here. We're just gonna leave them like this for now because once we push the cake down, it'll kind of spread out a bit or the beef. Okay. All right, now for the fun part, or should we leave this here? Where do you want it? It doesn't matter. I'm like, where do you want it? Okay.
All right, so for the steak, I'm gonna start with how it would be when it's raw. So I'm gonna go with some pinks, some oranges. And it's kind of weird. You're thinking like, well, you're gonna put brown and all this color, you're not gonna, you could see it. It makes a huge difference when you are um, coloring. So this is soft pink. And Americolor is gonna be at the cake show too, which I'm super excited about. They don't. I love Americolor. <laughs> Americolor is my favorite thing to to work with. The only thing that drives me nuts is these little things. But they're very sealed. I was going to too, but I didn't want you guys to be like, oh my god, she didn't put her mouth on that. Huh? It is really hard. I mean, I guess it's very protected. Do you have a, a pen blade or a knife? No? Oh, I got it, I got it, I got it. Oh, <laughs> it's like an extra workout, man. Okay, I'm gonna put some peach. Now, I like to work with a plate. I always work with a plate. It doesn't matter who's cake or not, or if it was someone famous or not, or if I'm teaching a class, I'm always gonna use plates. I feel like I like a palette that allows my colors to kind of mingle. We're not gonna, we're gonna use the exact same plate to color this thing and I'm gonna add tons of different colors. So I like to use grain alcohol. The only one you can buy here is like this one or they have a different brand and it is 75.5% uh, proof, which works just like the regular Everclear that is 85.5. Um, the difference is really nothing. Um, this dries as quick as the other one. I mean, I've never worked with 85.5, but I've seen it. You have some? Oh, you have some? Okay. We'll drink this one and we'll work with that one. <laughs> Who needs shots? Can you pass the shots around? I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, you brought this one, huh? They brought it to Laura from Vegas. Oh, but I may use a lot. No, I'm going to use a lot. I use a lot. Bottles, no, that's fine. I use this. It works the same. But yes, that's the one that's like they don't sell here. So we're going to kind of. I'm gonna use a lot. I'm not very careful with my ever uh, my so you green alcohol. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then we're gonna use. I'm just gonna use these ones. Not too bad, dirt. Okay. Makeup sponges. I prefer sponging than I do using a paintbrush. We will use a paintbrush maybe to add some of like um, around the edges, but I usually really I always just use a makeup sponge. So we're gonna kind of just combine the colors here. And we're going to just start coloring. And it's crazy. I know when I color, I just like, people are like, she is not going to get the right color with that stuff. She don't know what she's doing. <laughs> but this is, um, this is how passionate I'm about food. And it's like, I guess when I think about like why I do this food is, not really like it's like my art does that make sense like i'm like i'm the picasso of food kind of thing you know there's not like there's no monetary value i mean yeah i teach classes here and there and i'll make some money but it's not really about making money with this it's really like pushing myself as an artist to be able to make someone believe that this is a piece of food or you know what i'm saying that's what i get more in joy of you know I've had people are like, I've gotten in the elevator and I'm holding like um, eggs and ramens and this guy was like, enjoy your dinner. And I was like, oh, it made me so happy. <laughs> I was like, I sure will, buddy. Okay, I'm going to add it. Uh, let's see. I'm going to hit it a little bit with some white. And this I'm just going to use directly. When you're using a Maricolor or white, you don't need to add any Everclear. It already has. It's thin enough. Um, for it to not need any kind of base to it. Um, the reason why I'm going to do white, because you see how bright it looks, it's like it's not realistic to a meat. So we're going to add the white to kind of start kind of blending the color and we're actually using the color we're trying to get. Even though it's not completely raw meat, raw meat has a little bit more red into it, and I'm not going to add red because it's not necessary. The pink will add as what we need for red. And I never wear gloves either. I'm a, I like to get dirty. 
Okay, now we are going to use um, some ivory. I'm gonna throw some more, a little bit of orange too. Let's not open, let's go with the peach. Oh, some chocolate. And I'm using the same exact plate. And we're going to now go and like, you're gonna kind of like go work quickly. You're not trying to, um, what I'm trying to say is like when you're using a sponge, it's very flat, right? So you're not gonna get in through all the creases. So that's why I say we do the creasing because some of the colors are gonna pour through as we start darkening the meat kind of in a sense. So we're gonna just do our first layer of darkening the meat. So basically we're cooking it now. Now you don't have, like if you're doing this for a client's cake, I wouldn't expect you guys to start, you know, coloring it in pink and doing all that. You can skip the pink part, but I'm showing you guys how realistic to make something. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't do all that for a customer. I'd be like, oh no, it's going to go brown. That's it, you know? But it depends. I mean, you, it depends on how much you love what you're doing. I mean, art, it, and it depends how much you're charging somebody too. I wouldn't expect you guys to spend so much time coloring something if you know you're, you're only making let's say fifty dollars off the cake you know what i'm saying i would rather you guys just color that thing brown don't even spend that much time but if you charge what you're worth then yes and you're charging a, a customer to make something realistic and they say oh i want a steak to look real then you're going to take your time and then you're going to do the coloring i'm going to need more brown I'm going to add a little bit of black, too. You need more color? No. We don't waste the color to scroll. You know what you do? When this feels like it's no longer coming out, there's still a lot of color in here, okay? You cut this baby in half, and you scoop it out and make it work. That's what you do. You don't, you don't waste. There's, there's color in there. I've never thrown mine without cutting it in half. Mm-mm. Okay, so I have a little bit of black here. I don't want to go too much. The black, what's going to help is like darken the color more versus um, versus like just having the brown because the brown is now kind of like mixing in with the white and mixing in with the pink. So it's leaving it to this like more like a brownish. It's still brown, but it's not really cooked meat. So we're going to add a tiny bit of black. I just put it here and I kind of pull to it like a very small tip just to kind of darken it. We are going to go a little darker up here, like if it's cooked and seared. But for now, we're just going to, I'm going to double check, make sure. I know you guys can't see from that angle. So I'm trying to see how I can not hold it. We're going to go to the top. I'm going to add a little bit of black. I'm going to probably drop a little bit of black around the edges. And then I'm going to go back with the brown. Now, if you mess up, use the other side and pick it right back up. And then you go back. You went too dark and it got too much black on it. It's easy to repair. I'm going to go back a little bit and use this back to pick some of the color off because what it's going to do, let me see if I can kind of see here with you guys. Let me see how this side's looking. Okay, too pink. Okay. I can't see it that well there. I'm like, what is that side looking like? I'm going to kind of pick up some of the color. Huh? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. You can only have to let me on rare, you guys. <laughs> My husband would die if someone ordered it well done. And we've seen it. Like, we're like, and I'm even like, how could you eat it like that? I mean, I mean, maybe okay, medium well. But not on like carbon, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I 
That's an expensive meat, ma'am. I like it rare. Yeah, medium rare. Yeah, medium rare because what happens is you're getting like the thing with the meat is like, huh? You don't want to lose the juices of the meat. Exactly. Exactly. No, it's like charcoal. You're like, you know, no. Mm. But people like it. I'm like, get it, get it. You know what I'm saying? Like, get it. Not my cup of tea. So I'm gonna add a little bit of more. I actually need the orange. I was not gonna try to crack it open because you know how hard it is to crack those things open. But this is how all my colors look. This is like, this is what everything looks like. But I'm an art. Like I said, I'm an artist, you guys. This is what I love to do. And if you guys ever need help with like coloring, I can match anything. And it doesn't have to be food. I'm very. Um, I've just studied colored a lot because I have to in order for me to understand how to make something realistic. So the great part of adding a little bit of orange and some brown, it makes that kind of like charcoal look. So if you're looking to do like grilled shrimp or let's say you're making something like a hot dog or hamburger and you want it to look kind of grilled, you mix a little bit of brown and orange and it makes a nice grilled color. So again, I just use the same plate. I don't ever switch. Now I may switch the pad because that's a bit excessive now. And these are so the dollar store, you guys. And you just throw it away. And the great thing to this, once I'm done with this, I just throw it away. I don't, there's no, the cleaning is less for me, I guess, in a sense, you know. And if you're doing this, it just, to me, like everything pulls from each other. So I start creating a very custom color versus me using like, you know, a palette that I'm just pulling colors off. No longer is it becoming a custom color. It's just brown or it's just orange. You know what I'm saying? This is now like everything combined. So let's say when I, I may pick up a little bit of an extra color that I wasn't like expecting, but it'll kind of bring out a different color in what I'm making. Does that make sense? So we're going to kind of just here and there. And even though you guys can't tell right now that there is orange happening, let me make sure this side is getting some color. I am going to mix a little bit more here. And I'm a very up and down kind of painter. A little bit more orange. Yeah, I'm so excited. Maricolor is going to be there. Baker's Bodega Express. Poppy Paint's going to be there. We're going to use hers for the um, yes for the prom. Yeah, we that went quick. It was so quick. I don't know if Manny. He might have some extra. We you may have to track him out, down. <laughs> <laughs> You didn't hear it from me. Shh. Okay, now I'm going to grab a little bit of this. And I am going to use a brush just to kind of do a little bit of the edges so they looked a little bit more charred. And I'm gonna kind of wipe a little bit off here. I just want to show a little bit of some of the striations. Fix this little corner here. And I would suggest using a turntable. I probably should have used a little bit of a turntable. So I'm not like guessing to see if the colors are on that side working for you guys, so see. I didn't even think about it. Too late now. <laughs> I'm not too late now, you guys. Yes. Too late. But we'll show you. I'll turn it once I put it on the plate. So then you can kind of like wipe some of it off a little in certain areas just to kind of bring out some of that, you know, pink in there. So you see some of the meat. Or if you want it, you know, to show more, you can wipe some of it off. And once it dries, it dries though. 
and we're going to be using um, Poppy's Paints new glaze to glaze it. So because once it dries completely, it's not going to be shiny, but because it's still wet right now and I'm able to manipulate it, it's still kind of like looking very wet. So we'll add a little bit. We might wait a little bit to let it dry before I do that because I don't want to mess it up. So let me put this on the steak. I mean on the mashed potatoes. And I do talk like that when I'm doing my tutorials for my instructor or my schools. I'm like, use the, use the mashed potatoes when you wipe it down, you know? <laughs> because I mean, it's like, how else am I gonna explain what we're doing here, you know what I'm saying? Okay. I'm gonna pick it up like this. I'm trying not to. Let me bring the cameras here. Right, okay, we're good. And we're going to place it on. And I'm going to. That's crazy. And then we're going to, since I kind of picked it up a little bit. And you'd want to wait till it dries, because then you're gonna just. Does it just look like it would take hours to make? Mm -hmm. Yes. It actually makes me hungry. I know, right? <laughs> it's like I really want to. <laughs> <laughs> let me. Let <laughs> Hold on, let me clean it up. Let me double check that I got all the areas. Right? Uh, that's the best part, you guys. Why do you think I'm a food artist? I'm like, babe, I got to go study this New Mexican restaurant because I want to make a burrito. No, I'm just kidding. But yes, I do, that, I do get to study a lot of it. Let me make sure a little bit of this. Where's my other sponge? I'll make this one. Oh, there you are. Yeah, I always stick to the same sponges too because they're going to have more of your color already inside. Oh, yeah. You just don't paint on the, on the table like I just did. I should have brought wax paper. I just didn't even think about it. I was like, I'm prepared. I'm running, I'm running a little late, but I'm prepared. So I'm just kind of like wiping some of it off here and there just so it shows some of the striations and bringing out some of that pink stuff that we just did but you wouldn't even think that this had pink in it right and orange yeah so then we would pretty much wait for it to we can do some peppercorns if you want <laughs> Um, this is the glaze here, but I feel like, I would feel like, I don't want to damage it. Let me see. I think it's still too wet for me to touch, so I don't want to mess with it, you guys. So, but normally, so you would let it dry and then add some of this glaze and it'll stay shiny just like this throughout the whole event. So if you guys were doing it for a birthday party or some kind of, you know, you're going to deliver it and you want it to maintain its shininess, then add some confectioner's glaze or you could add the pipe and gel to once it completely dries. Because you saw how when I touched it and it made the little dots, it's because it's still w super, super wet and we have just layered a whole bunch of color into this. So there you go, you guys. That is a fillet me on. Do you guys have any questions? Am I going to see you guys at the Cake Bar Cake Show? Yeah. Okay, you? I'm actually taking the food realism class. Ooh, with Ella. Ella is good too. Yeah, Ella is really good. She's really, really good as well. So she's my, um, she'd be like, oh, Joyce, how did you make? I'm like, you better not teach this girl. I give her some of my secrets. I was like, <laughs> I was like, I'll give you the secret, but I don't want you sharing it, okay? Which I don't, again, I don't mind helping people, you know what I'm saying? But if it's something I teach, again, I'm not going to like, oh, yeah, here you go for free, you know what I'm saying? So, but I always help when you guys have questions. Are you going to go? Okay. You're going? Are you taking classes? No. No. You're taking classes. Hey, Nikki. I didn't even know you were in here. She's teaching. No. No, she's just, she's making, she's actually doing our 80s prom oh. cake. Yes. <laughs> no, she wanted to enjoy herself. Hi, are you coming? Okay, okay, I better see you there. All right. And then, um, 
Baker's Bodega will be there. Yes, Baker's Bodega Express is going to be there, you guys. We have AmeriColor. We have um, icing things. images. So if you guys are looking for edible printers, wafer paper, the uh, edible cutting machines, she has like the best um, ed edible paper and um, the printer ink. Uh, what else does she have? I mean, she's ice and images is bomb and they don't come out here. So this is going to be your time. And they have deco gel, you guys. And I've been trying to get you guys to, I want deco gel here. Yes. Oh, yes. Um, oh my God. I can't even think of the spray, but, uh, no. Flexible. Yes. Yeah. Yours are going to want to not miss that. Yes. It's a, yeah. She's going to demo. She's, she has a main stage demo on Saturday. We put the schedule up on the website. With the demos also? Because I saw the class schedule. Yeah, the demos, the demos are free. They're in the vendor hall. So you guys can come in and watch demos all weekend. Yes. Okay. <laughs> no, yeah, you, no, it's on the website. That's what I'm trying to tell you. It's on the website. Yes, you guys have to come. We have the demos all weekend. She's going to have the paper, po it's called paper potion. It actually, uh, you can actually use it to perfume your cake as well. So like if you want this to smell like, you see, this will be tricky, but if you put that paper potion, it smells very sweet. You can actually, it's like perfume for your cake. I've used it for a lot of my clients' cakes because we all know that we eat with our eyes and our senses. Yeah, so I've actually been wanting to tap into like um, food smells for like sweets you know what i'm saying because i want it to like imagine this taste this actually smelled like a steak but it did it was no way a steak that's kind of what i'm working on too so we'll see in this in life but yeah you guys we have um poppy paint's gonna be there lula's goodies is gonna be there with her chile gummies and uh this popcorn that is like so bomb and it's a lot of flavor and then um we have um viva los cupcakes we have um there's so many i'm just like it's a lot. There's Grex. If you guys want to airbrush, they're going to be doing some demos. We have um, Sugar Prism. We have uh, this new company that does like to help promote like bakers. It's Baker Studio, uh, Archon Mount. Yes, this is strictly for the sweets artists. It's not just cakes. It's, if you guys are tempted, go to compete. I mean, it's great prizes too. And we're going to have raffles. There, We just got um, an, someone's... Uh, we're gonna we're gonna have an eight inch quart or not eight inch an eight quart KitchenAid mixer. Oh, yeah. You guys are gonna that? Yep. <laughs> yep. Yes. Oh, yeah. 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 It's gonna be there, and we just got a huge basket of Neiman. Uh, what is it? Neiman? I always say the name wrong. Name name. name what is Cass Cass on there? <laughs> Neiman. No. Uh, yes. We're done, huh? Oh, you're leaving? Okay, all right. Well, 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 well it's the vanilla that's like thirty dollars right now, you guys. Yeah, yeah. So, all right, you guys. Yes. Well, all right, you guys. I am done, and I hope you guys to see. Yeah, you see. All right, I hope to see you guys at the Cake Bar Cake Show in Long Beach, California, July seventh and eighth, and steak. <laughs> Next time I'll do some